Hey guys, it's Rachel Crow, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. New single just dropped, Dime, yeah. and I was looking at your Twitter account, and like all of these celebrities are like tweeting about it. I know. What's up with that? I don't understand. I think it's awesome though. Like it's <laughs> making my life really happy yeah. because I was worried that you know, as any artist probably would be when they put out new music after a really long time, that maybe nobody you know would like it or yeah. nobody would care. And it's really cool. Like I'm getting tweets from my friends that are like, "My friend is going through a breakup right yeah. now, so this song is perfect." Or "We love this. It's a bop." Like just really nice things. And I'm having a lot of fun seeing that. Like it, right. it's making me really happy. I think it was just great timing for the song too. Like j just right before summer like yeah um let, let's jump into like creating this song because um you worked with some like two dudes that like are awesome their band ajr mm -hmm. um and you co-wrote the song with them but what was that like going into the studio to record and, and or i'm sorry to write the song yeah it was good it was weird because i really we kind of became fast friends because yeah. we were both on the same label um and we thought it would be a good idea to kind of collaborate and so when we first went in the song the very first version is so completely <laughs> different like there's probably pretty much nothing the same except be singing it really? um and we've We've done so many versions of this song. It's probably like the eighth or something version mm -hmm. that everyone is hearing. And we just really wanted it to be perfect. And I had a strong vision for what I wanted it to sound like. And they're such great guys. And we're friends. So it was really easy to kind of talk them through what I was feeling and for them to right. kind of tell me how they wanted it to sound. And it ended up really well. Like, I think everyone is really happy with the final result of the song. But yeah. it was cool. It was it was fun to, like, write with them and... Um, kind of we 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 had a lot of fun writing it because it's called dime and so we wanted like a lot of puns about money right. um and i, I actually Which i think got, you nailed it like yeah. perfectly <laughs> i got the funniest youtube comment that was like little pun heavy but like the song and i was like i'm okay with it like it yeah. made me feel good it was funny so why this track like why did you want to put this track out there it's really funny at first i was like i don't know i don't think this is the one like i'm not sure <laughs> if if this is how i want to you know almost reintroduce myself right. um but after just listening and and definitely testing the ears of like people around me i i, I was like why not let's just jump in just jump in like go for it so yeah. you know just yeah. winging it now tell me that about the difference from rachel crow from the self title ep to now with dime um i'm a lot older and and I mean you know five years isn't necessarily the longest <laughs> amount of time but for I think a teenager that is because yeah. you've changed so much over those years and I really needed to grow and um, have the chance to find myself and figure out what I wanted and who I was and um, that kind of stuff so I've definitely changed in that way mm. I've I've matured a lot and um, my content that I write about and things that I go through are so different from when I was, you know, 14 years right. old. Um, so it's really cool to be able to share that with everyone and, and say, you know, this is what I've gone through in the last, you know, few years of my life. I hope you can relate to that. I hope you feel something when you hear it. Now, you just mentioned um, your your writing is different, but when you go into the studio, how different is that nowadays? Like, are you more, do you feel like you know what you're doing once you step into the studio or are, are there still challenges that you face as opposed to when you first went in um, for the self-titled EP? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, <laughs> actually. Um, I think everybody has their flaws or things that they could be better at. Right. Um, I'm definitely not a producer. I have learned <laughs> that. But I can say, hey, that beep sound, put that in there. Right. You know what I mean? I can point you know to things. You know what you like. Yeah, and I'm working on that um, as well. But I think my writing has changed um, – I know exactly what I want to say now when mm. I go in. I think before, when you're so young, you kind of, you're having fun in the studio. Like, you just want to, like, sing all the time. I mean, it's a learning experience at the same time. Yes, yes. You just want to, like, have a good time. And now it's it's definitely, obviously, so much fun. But but it's more serious to me. Now I, I really, I, I calculate exactly how I want to say things. And um, I know what I want people to feel from this song, mm. no matter what, when I go in. And, um I don't know. It's definitely it's different, but I love it. I think it's better. Now, how do you how do you get better at writing? Um, obviously, you're growing up. You're you're having more experiences in life. But is it a factor of like you're reading more, or the type of reading that you're doing, or maybe the type of music that you're listening to? Like, how does that work? Yeah, great questions, man. <laughs> wow. Um, 
that's so good i i read a lot of poetry books is that weird um rupee carr is like my favorite poet in the whole world and i love her and i relate to her so much um just with things she says and she kind of wrote you know um this book called milk and honey as she was growing up about just like being a girl and 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 the challenges you might face with just that you know the simplest thing and being a minority and so i read through that and i really loved everything she was saying and i realized that there was a space right now where maybe sure you have your you know empowering songs but maybe there's a space for girls it's like it's okay to feel bad sometimes like Mm -hmm. it's okay to feel sad and i i kind of wanted also in my project to write things like that um whereas dime is definitely more fun and upbeat and empowering and and i feel like dime could totally be gender neutral like Mm -hmm. because it's cool and right and 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 the term dime you know notoriously is not like the best but i wanted to almost like reinvent that and and make make it so you felt good about because the hip-hop world ruined it a little bit right just just say it (laughs) but like you're you know when you're a dime of a human being that should mean that you're dope and you're somebody's favorite person and you're happy and you know you're empowered and you you know you go for anything and you go for your dreams and and i think that's important to hear um but my writing definitely i think as you get older you start to read more and care more about what's happening in the world world mm-hmm. and i think there is a huge need for love right now yeah. with everything that's going on not just in our country but just everywhere just in the world, world yeah. so i think yeah that's what i'm trying to do now as as we're talking with um about new music are you looking to do like a sophomore ep are you looking to do another uh, or a debut album or you're going to be doing like singles a lot of artists are preferring to do singles nowadays yeah i'm definitely working on a body of music i can't tell if it's an album or an ep yet Mm. um it just depends but uh i definitely think you can expect more music in the late summer so you go into the studio and what is the first thing that you do like do you first write your lyrics do you first listen to music or work on on you know the music that you might want to work with um that's so these are just great um so i love your questions um sometimes it depends uh sometimes i'll go in with a producer and they'll be like oh my gosh i was working on this track last week and i know it's for you and i want you to hear it and we can tweak it but i want you to like write on it so sometimes that'll happen and those sometimes are the best songs um how dime came about was just literally getting in the studio with those two guys and just like vibing out and playing on a guitar and that kind of stuff um and then you kind of build the track and then you start to build the melodies and then the lyrics and that's kind of how that happened but it really depends it depends on my mood um i always joke about how i'm on my phone but it's not just like texting i write notes of like lyrics or things that i think about throughout the day and sometimes i'll go in like hey i wrote this line and i'm gonna base the song around it guys and they just go with it so yeah just instagramming yeah i know (laughs) you know what you know you gotta like your friends pictures you gotta (laughs) give support so that's all i'm doing honestly (laughs) let's take it back to 2012 Okay. Um, you went on tour with um, Big Time Rush, and those guys were super young at the same time, but they were like professional mm-hmm. all the way. Uh, I'm curious what being on tour with them was like because not only were they a machine, but like I said, they're they're you know they're kids. Yeah, no, it was like having four big brothers that are like super annoying, but you love them so much. Um, and I'm still very close with like all of them pretty yeah. much. So um, it was really fun. That's still to this day one of my favorite experiences I've ever had. And it's really fun being on a tour bus, especially at my age um, that I was like, you know, as a 14 year old kid to travel in a bus, in a bunk <laughs> to city to city, like to sing. And it was just awesome. Right. Like it was such a great experience. And I met so many amazing people and, and people that, maybe didn't know anything about my music that became lifelong fans that I still talk to today. Right. So it's really, really special um, to have that one-on-one with fans and with with Big Time Rush, like my homies. I loved, I loved being with them because also, like you said, they are professional. So they kind of knew how to, you know, teach me things about the road. And like mm. we, we had like giant group workouts in the morning, which was really fun. And they were just really nice and very welcoming to me so you're giving me all the positives but give me some of the challenges on that tour because um, that that's that's a mega like trip you're you're it doing was wild no there were some definite scares um i remember one time it wasn't even a scare it was like 
I was walking backstage and I didn't have my credential on me and this secure this giant security oh, no. guy like stopped me and Logan was like right in front of me and he was like you can't pass or something and I was like okay that's literally my bus please I'm sorry and Logan was like hey man she's a part of the tour he like came out and helped me and I was like Logan like it was funny because I was so little and so scared yeah. I was like oh um, like the perfect fangirl like right? <laughs> I looked just like I mean I was as yeah. well so that's probably what gave me away hey. but um I will yeah I'm trying to think of like super negatives they're really weren't any like i had an amazing time actually because of where we were traveling i remember we did hershey park and so after the show we got like a inside like secret like we could ride all the rides at night like it was awesome my family was with me pretty much the whole time um my little sister so it was fun they actually my little sister's birthday is august 3rd Mm -hmm. and the boys made her this cake out of like Twinkies and donuts and like tour food and like gave her a birthday party. All four big time rush guys. She was like, how old is she? She was like nine or 10. And, and I was like, this is a dream That's for crazy. most children. She's not going to sleep for <laughs> a long time. That's a lot of sweets. She didn't feel it. She was not feeling it. And she like wouldn't hug Kendall. And wow. he hated that because he was like, I'm going to get her to hug me. Right. And so like all of this time goes by. We're on tour. Like he's the sweetest guy. And he's like, I just want you to like <laughs> love me. And so finally, like she like barely like cringed when he hugged her <laughs> at the end. But she was like, I was like, dude, do you know how many girls would kill for a Twinkie right. cake from Big Time Rush right now? Like, or a hug. I know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> She's, she's getting embarrassed up there. Oh, yeah. Hey, Anna. <laughs> she's right there. By the way, speaking of Logan, I always call him Buzz Lightyear because he reminds me of Buzz. Literally, the hair. Yeah, exactly. It's the hair. Like Literally. I love Logan. He is just so awesome. I see him a lot, actually, because yeah. we go to the same gym still. Okay. So I see him all the time, and I'm always like, Logan. I see Kendall me. a lot. I'm getting tired of that. You're getting tired? It's no. too much, Kendall. Kendall's the best. And Kevin, his brother, is yeah. like one of my friends. Dope. Great people. They're and they have a pig. People. His name should, Yuma is the cutest. You should thing. just get them all together and do like a 2017 and reunion tour. And the pig will just like but this time you're headlining. Ooh, I don't know about that. That would be weird. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's <sighs> do it. I think that'll be epic. I'm down. Right. Oh, headlining. Well, that's a nice word nice. with my name. Okay. Like but it. you have to drop like an album or an EP I or know. something, right? Just a mixtape. All right. Just pull a like that works. Kendrick or a hey, J. Cole. You never know. Just do it. Just yeah. drop it. All right. The single is out now, Dime. Yeah. What else can we expect for you uh, for the remainder? Well, for summer, actually. Good question. Hopefully, I get to play some shows this summer. I would love that. that and just awesome. to get back on stage. Um, and then, like I said, maybe music late summer. And I could possibly be filming a movie. So mm. we shall see. Oh, snap. Yeah. Everything's good. I'm happy. All right. Well, I can't wait to see a music video for Dime oh, because I feel like it's going to be kind of epic. It's going to be dope. I already <laughs> know what it is, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Always teasing. Always teasing. Thanks for watching here. This is Rachel Crow. Get her new single. It's called Dime. You should listen to her because. I'm a dime. And there you go. That's it here on Front Row Live. Thanks for watching.